Hello, hope you're well. As you know, I love a three ingredient recipe. I've got the 4321 playlist where we come up with some epic ideas. I've kind of killed that off for the time being because I wanted to increase, I hope it's all right, to five ingredients. I don't know what it is when I first started this journey. Five ingredient recipes or less is something that I really used to like look for. Like I got bored with a long list of ingredients. And it turns out like half of those are normally salt and pepper and herbs and stuff anyway. I think there's something quite nice about the number five as well. It's like not too like, like overpowering, but also at the same time there's enough for sort of flexibility. It's something, it's quite a comforting number if that's a thing. So by the end of today's video, the aim is to do a starter or brunch, main and dessert, each with five ingredients. That's gonna be our aim right here. Uh, we'll tick them off as we go maybe, except I'm gonna do them, of course, Barry Stiley out of sync. <laughs> I'm not gonna do a pun about cooking out of my sink. That is a very good video idea though. So we're gonna get the main started at least, and that is gonna hopefully be a smoky chicken and chorizo roast, um, which sounds a bit odd. Uh, in the supermarket last night, I was genuinely doing this face as I overlay this right now. I was confused, but also inspired. Like, what can I cover this in? There were so many different things like pesto and harisso and all different pastes and things. I even started looking at dry soup mixes and thought, ooh, could we do that? I didn't feel like doing that. I went for something called smoked tomato paste, which was next to a whole host of other different things. But my point is, it's super flexible with this. So I'm not gonna show this. Because even in recent videos, when I've sort of been like rubbing chicken and other meats and stuff, it's kind of freaked me out a little bit. And I'm gonna do a bit for the vegetarians today. So I've got a chicken in a bag. I'm just gonna um, slice it down the back of it so that flatten it a little bit and then coat it in tomato paste. So hopefully when you see it in a minute, it'll be slightly suntanned. So give that a coat all over, wash my hands and bung it in the oven. Alrighty, so that is going in for the first hour solo. However, I am a bit worried about that paste. I might have to put foil on it initially. We'll just see what happens. I've never done this before. It's just kind of like an idea, so. Despite the time, what we're trying to go for is simplicity uh, with these recipes and it's really super quick and lazy what else goes in there and then you'll have like a whole meal, it should be amazing. But whilst that's doing its first bake, uh, we're going to do the dessert which is going to be a tart 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 So we're going to do a peach and pear tart 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 using the ready made puff pastry sheet and I wanted to get golden syrup but they didn't have any last night, they had like one little bit left and I don't know if it's going to be enough so I got some maple syrup instead. Uh, normally you'd actually use like flour and butter to make one of these and also you can flavour it with uh, nutmegs and spices and stuff, all different types of fruit and actually instead of dumping ice cream on I thought I'd get a bit crazy and I bought my fifth ingredient, some white chocolate to potentially drizzle on the top and this should be rather easy easy indeed. So uh, for the peach, I'm just going to run my knife along inside. Twisty, twisty. Uh, ah, nice. All right, peachy. Uh, so we'll put them to one side. So it's going to be facing up like that. It's going to have a bit of a curve. So we kind of want to keep this with the pear. Um, you can peel it if you want. I'm not going to. We are just going to have it down the middle. And then obviously the pastry will drape over. And the fruit that you need is kind of based on the size of the pan that you're going to use. So I'm going to put this on top of there and actually just run a knife around it, but give it a little bit of slack. But it's worth us checking that uh, it is gonna be enough. Oh yeah, okay, cool. So we'll just leave that to one side. We don't need it just yet because as exciting that looks, underneath it, it's a bit boring right now. So we're gonna sweeten it and that's where the maple syrup comes in. Normally you would caramelize it with like butter and sugar straight away in the pan. So the maple syrup or what I was hoping for, the golden syrup will hopefully, hopefully <laughs> replicate that. So just to reiterate, this is a pan that can go in the oven. Please make sure you use one of those. <laughs> we'll get a message. Oh, Barry, I tried doing it, but my uh, my pan melted. Eee. So what we want to do first of all is soften this fruit up. So here is a little bit of tap water. Start to bring that up to a low simmer. And this is completely genuine. If I had another ingredient, or if I just did pear or peach, or of course you can, because hopefully you're not following these rules, I was gonna use apple juice in there for this step, because there's some sugars in that too. Drizzle that maple syrup in, oh my gosh. We're gonna drape that over the fruit evenly, forgetting how hot that is, Barry, nice one. Evenly press it in, like so, all right. I really hope this works. <laughs> and the good thing is it can go on the low shelf with our, oh, that chicken looks amazing. And my only fear right now is that the maple syrup is quite dark. I mean, obviously you go for that caramelization with a standard one, so it might look more authentic. As the famous phrase goes, which came first, the chicken or the tart? The chicken. Oh, you 
beautiful thing. Look at that. Oh my gosh, nearly burnt my chin on it. So you want to keep it lazy, but add some more flavors and juices into that from the juices of the chicken too. Check this out. From the freezer aisle, a bag of mixed veg, some potato wedges. Oh yeah. And I need a bigger bowl. And to add to that smokiness, we have got some pieces of chorizo, which we're going to stir in and they're going to release some oils as well. Just giving that a bit of a haircut. And he loves chorizo, don't you boy? Oh, and you see there's a little bit of those chicken juices in there. We're keeping that in there, all right? Get those in there. Oh, wow. That smells so good. And the most important thing is to try and level it out as best we can now to give the chicken a nice little platform to sort of lie down on. Ah, that is actually hot. Stick that chicken back down, carrying on to cooking town. All right, I've just gone a little bit over time, but that is because I just generally did a cameo request uh, for someone's uh, anniversary and it went on a completely weird tangent about like that they have a pet wolf and a big number six in their house. You know who you are. The tart, it, look at that lovely golden color on there. And it's sitting in a lake of the maple syrup mixture. Okay, I'm hoping it has stained the fruit. Let's keep cooking that chicken. Another 20 minutes on that. I'm gonna let this, Oh my gosh, you smell like Canada. If we tip it over well enough, that should be amazing. Like proper stonker. Translation, if I flip it right now, I'm probably gonna drizzle red hot maple syrup all over my arms. And I'd rather not do that. <laughs> you know what folks, I've completely forgotten about the starter slash brunch and actually there's no exact template to it. I'll come on to it in a minute because that chicken is starting to char it, which is incredible. And the veg and everything's cooked through. We've got to get that out in a moment. So. It, visually it will look good, um, but I might have to have it cold whilst we work on the... <laughs> I don't know what to do with the starter. Let's flip the tart. That is still warm. That is very fluid in there. It's maybe slowed down a little bit. We've got a plate that is going to go on top here. I want to make sure I've got a really good grip underneath it. Oh my gosh. Ugh. 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 Oh, I don't know if you heard that. There was a delicate pastry drop. Has it dropped out? Yes, it has. Oh, wow. Okay, one fell out. No one needs to know about that. I'm actually really, really happy and slightly surprised that has worked so well. Oh my gosh, you beautiful thing. Look at the charring on that. That is like Piri Piri Chicken Style. <gasps> It smells absolutely outstanding. Charred veg, spicy wedges, chorizo oils. Anyhow, let's white chocolate. Now I could do this the polite way or the uh, messy way, and I'm actually gonna try and do it the polite way. And this is just getting a spoon of the white chocolate and just drizzling it up and down. I am loving that. Ah, oh, I mean, ice cream, I would definitely have on there. I'm not picky. So now we better think about this starter. I had croissants, eggs, cheese, and ham, and some chives. They didn't actually have any smaller packet ones, so I was like, oh, I'll just buy a pot. But I forgot what I was gonna do. There's so many different ways we can do this. And I think I might bypass the chives, and we've got some um, Dijon. Let's, um, let's Tom Cruise it, shall we? Let's wing it. Actually, let's take a minute right now. We've got those five ingredients. Let me know down below, what would you do? I'm mulling over doing like some little pockets and then sticking the egg on top. Or do I scramble the egg with the ham and cheese and the mustard and do just some crazy like baked croissant thing? Generally, let me know what you would do though. We're gonna do something else. Gonna spread the Dijon onto the croissants, okay? Lovely kick. I love how this could fail and it probably will. Ham on each croissant. How many ingredients have I used so far? Three, okay, and we've got eggs. Oh, and cheese, yeah, <laughs> just a complete mind block. Boom, right, so hopefully we've got this lovely sandwich concoction here like that. Look at this thing. I'm gonna go for three eggs, and why not a little bit more mustard in there? So no oil, unfortunately. <sighs> Come on guys, it's a new playlist. Give me some slack. That was the thing with the 4321. I was really harsh on myself. In go our mustard beaten eggs. Lift and sit in that egg mixture. I hope it's an oof. 
There is actually so much potential with that. Like we could have soaked the whole croissant thing in the egg as well. That is actually an amazing idea. I could go on maybe YouTube shorts, if this is for YouTube or whatever, and go, here's my five ingredients. This is what I've picked. You guys tell me what you do and I'll pick my best. That could be really fun, couldn't it? Or I could do it once I get my live stream thing set up very, very soon. I think you'll love it. We have some right fun. Yeah, that is looking amazing. Now, I only wish that I put it one side actually, because then I could potentially roll it easier in the pan. It's gonna be a bit like wrapping a present. If I try and lift this over, I don't think I'm gonna get great coverage. We can try though and see what happens. Oh no, it's split, damn it. We can lift it up in batches, look at this. There we go, hang on. It's sort of there, okay. I'm happy with this, I'm actually bizarrely happy with this. Come on mate, stay on there. It is actually encased. <laughs> if I get three spatulas like that just to take the weight and then turn it. Oh wow, that kind of went everywhere. <laughs> but we've kind of got a crock encased croissant. <laughs> Why not put another bit of cheese on? Here we go. Look at that. That's amazing. Oh my God, look at that. <laughs> You've got the cheese, the ham, the mustard, the croissant, then the omelette and then the cheese. And of course the omelette is mustardy as well. Oh, mm. oh that is bonkers. Oh, so comforting just enough tang of the mustard. Even in the egg, you're getting those vibes there. The warmth and gooiness of the cheese and that slightly salty edge to the ham. Absolutely incredible. That piece alone will be so filling and extremely cheeky. Outstanding. Now for the chicken, uh, sadly, this is um, a little cooler now. But as you can see, as I try and pick this up, that flavor is drilled into there. Mmm. I'm not going to use the M word, but it's not dry. It's very, very succulent and tender. And that is not overpowering at all. The wedges, oh, they've soaked in some of the juice. Mmm. But are not soggy. And I think that would have happened if you put it in from the start. But right down here, yeah, you've got, oh my gosh, the chorizo oils. Mmm. That is incredible. And look, that was just five ingredients. How much? We could customize this. I'm like dreaming again of the aisle going, oh, maybe I should have done that. I don't, I've never done pesto on roast chicken. That might be like for a long time in there, it could destroy it, but mmm, that is so good. What a great day. Last but not least, um, the chocolate hasn't set yet. I, I don't I really care, I kind of want that anyway. Oh, a go pear, oh, that is tender. Let me try the fruit on its own. And remember, you could peel it if you want. I don't really find that an appealing step. Mmm. Soft, subtle, not overpowering, but sweetened, okay? Not, not bland and boring. You've got that maple flavor running through it. And now some of that pastry, which has absorbed a lot of that maple flavor. Mmm, that tastes like something and I can't think of what. Definitely not a croc omelette. <laughs> Caramelization, like a Kinder Bueno vibe in a weird way. Absolutely world-class with those maple vibes running through it. And again, five ingredients. It could be four, just do one fruit. You don't even need the chocolate on it, although it did tip that to complete maximum flavor town then. Absolutely stonking. I'll write all these recipes up, give them a go. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more, let me know down below. And of course, let me know what you do with your croissant. Bye. Oh, you're still here? Uh, check out these names of the people here on the screen. These people support me on Patreon. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. And of course, YouTube algorithm style there's a video uh, on the screen too. If you click that, that will take you to some video that the, they've suggested. Crazy.